Well, hey guys, one question that comes up every now and then is how do I build a subwoofer amplifier? Well, the answer to that is well, you can really use any amplifier. I think the question is how do I build a circuit to filter the frequencies, an active crossover, if you will, or an electronic filter that removes the high frequency so I just send the bass notes or the low frequency to the subwoofer driver. And that's what this video is going to be about. So we're essentially we're going to talk about an active filter. But I'm not going to get into all, all filter theory. You know, that goes very deep. That's a very long subject. And you probably hear of filters and filter responses like Chebyshev and Butterworth, Bessel, and you know a bunch of other type of things that deal with filters but we're going to keep it simple here but you will no, have to know a simple a couple simple things so let's get started well first we need to filter the frequencies this simple type of filter is known as a first order low pass the problem with it is as the frequency increases, it'll approach the crossover point and then the amplitude at the output will decrease. And as the frequency decreases, it'll be a slow ramp off. First order filters will decrease at about 6 dB per octave. So every doubling of frequency, it decreases 6 dB. Well, for a subwoofer, type system, that is too slow of drop off. And I'm showing a chart here. So we have a 6 dB first order filter. It's too slow a drop off. Now we can use a second order filter, which is more complex. And it has a faster roll off. Well that's better, but I think an ideal situation for a subwoofer filter would be a third order filter and that would be a even faster roll off that'd be 18 db so for each order increase it's 6 db so with this one we have 18 db per octave and i think that will be ideal for what we're looking for this okawa electric design website is very handy for advanced electronic calculations has all kinds of little tools I will put a link in the description so you can have this here is the filter tool and they have basic filters and we're looking for here it is third order solid key low pass So you go here and you can enter all the information, but we want to work with frequency. So we can go down here, put in our frequency, and it will come back and tell us the resistances and things needed. And it gives a bunch of other related information to filters, like the Bode diagram, Nyquist pole zeros, and phase margin, you know, more advanced things. Well, I wanted to have a frequency of 100 hertz, and this is what it spit out. This is our third order filter. And look at these values, 11K, 100K, 36K, these capacitors. I don't have some of these values on hand. I'd have to do series parallel to get some of these component values. For example, to get 11K, I'd have to put a 10 and a 1K in series. And, you know, 36K, and I'm sure I don't have some of these capacitor values handy. So what I'm going to do is try something different. This, this was kind of a red herring. So I'm going to go at it differently. Rod Elliott's Elliott Sound Products website. Great respect for the guy to put all this information up on the web for people. Well, he has a 
electronic crossover. I'm going to use the low pass part of it for my subwoofer amplifier. And here, this bottom part is the low pass section we're going to use. Not these values though. And I will also put a link to this page in the description. I would recommend reading it. it has lots of good information. He also provides various filter frequencies using common component values that you know I have. And the way this filter is designed is the filter components all have the same value resistance and capacitors so that makes it a lot easier to you know set up on the breadboard. He even uh, goes into less you know designs that work but are less um, desirable. So yeah, I would recommend reading this article if you want to know a little bit more about it. Okay, here's the layout for the third order low pass subwoofer filter. Now so I can use common values, component values, the filter actually crosses over at 106 hertz. And that's plenty good. I think a typical situation, 100 hertz is a good crossover point, but it really depends on your uh, your the type of speakers and everything that you're using. Now there are some other considerations which makes this a good circuit and you might want to read that article it covers a lot of these. Well it uses one 8-pin dual op amp IC so you know it's very small and simple. Reasonable input impedance it doesn't load down the device that's driving the circuit due to the filtering action low op amp loading that just means the outputs of the op amp are not loaded down by the filtering action if you had too low of resistance as the frequency increased these capacitors pretty much short out the signal and you don't want to load down these op amp outputs because it means more distortion and you could cause it to clip same value parts. The three resistors and three capacitors that make up the filter. You know, here's a 15K, 15K, 15K. 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 microfarad capacitors. They're all the same value. Makes it a lot easier to select components. Now there are a few other parts here. Like there's three 10K resistors. But that's okay. And you do see this feedback here this actually does have some gain and the reason it does is it allows you to have all the components be the same value for the filter and uh, like I say it has good overall performance so that's the filter let's build it well here's the circuit on the breadboard as you can see there's not a lot to it but there are a bunch of wires that got inputs and outputs and a scope connected to it. And I have the function generator connected. And we'll take a look at the waveform on the scope. Okay, here we are on the scope. Now we're running at 1.85 volts output around 52 hertz or so and as I increase the output will stay fairly flat and it's now it's, gonna, it's starting to drop as I increase the frequency and wow it is really dropping fast at a hundred and Let's see, 150, or about 600 millivolts. Let me turn that up. Between 
266 millivolts at around 200 Hertz and it just drops out to nothing let me set the scope back to the initial output and you can see how it diminishes as I crank up the frequency you know, around 250 and it's it's pretty much gone. I have to turn up the amplitude to see anything. So at 500, it's 17 millivolts. Oh, <laughs> we have an imposter. He wants to knock the camera over. Well, you probably want to hear what this sounds like, as I do. So I'll hook it up to my lab amp. And that's connected to this little 8-inch subwoofer down here and I'll play some music through it YouTube music so I don't get a strike of any sort see what this thing sounds like okay music player connected let's go well you're hearing a lot of things vibrate that's all that noise you hear, but I don't know, I'll see if I can turn it down maybe. Try another song. Hey, that's working swell. It pretty much blocks all the higher frequencies. And you just get the bass through it. It's working really well. Well, that worked pretty well. Let me leave you with one last thing before I end the video. If you want to connect it to stereo, because, you know, a subwoofer amplifier will be mono. You can combine the left and right channels like this. You don't want to just connect them together because you'll be shorting out the right to the left and the left to the right because just the way amplifiers work, the low impedance. So combine them through a resistor like this. I'm using 2.2K and then they go into the input. Of course, if you're just using a single input, you can just connect it right like this. Keep in mind that this amplifier will go down to DC because as you follow the signal through the amplifier there's no capacitors you know no blocking capacitors so you could add a blocking capacitor right right here probably like a 4.7 microfarad would work and if you want to put a level control on this, you can take out this resistor here and put a 10K volume pot right here. And that way you can adjust the level. Well, hope this helps, and thanks for watching.